Have you been to the grocery store lately? Ugh, food costs are rising and the supply chain is just becoming less reliable. So keeping a prepared pantry has never been more important, but how do you do it while also keeping to a budget? Hi, I'm Jess from Silo and Sage, and here we talk about all things homestead, homeschool, and handmade. And today we are going to talk about ways that you can build a pantry while also keeping to a budget. In an ideal world, you would build up your prepared pantry over time, right? You would add a few things every time you go to the grocery store, grab an extra bag of rice, grab a few extra cans, throw them in your basement, keep them for later. Most people are really just not gonna go out and buy like six months to a year's worth of food in one, spell, one fell swoop. It just isn't realistic. And most people don't have the money to do that. But unfortunately, in the current state of the world and what we're seeing with the supply chain and the incredibly rising food costs, it might actually be smart right now to allocate a bigger chunk of your budget to save money in the long run. So go out and buy a larger chunk of things now that you can save for later. But you still wanna be mindful of your budget overall, right? Well, today I'm gonna to share 15 ways that you can stock your pantry right now while also being mindful of your everyday budget. The first thing is to stick with the staples. Now there's this temptation to stock our pantries with a huge variety of foods because variety when we eat is fun, right? But if you're trying to stick to a budget, that really doesn't make a lot of sense. So keeping your meals a little bit more basic and that doesn't have to mean boring, but keeping them a little bit more basic will actually help you to save a little bit of money. Now you can add variety with your herbs and your spices while keeping the main portions of your meals kind of basic staples. So specialty ingredients, those are the things that tend to be more expensive. So when you keep your meals kind of simple, it will help you save money. Basic meals though, don't really have to be bland or boring. They just don't require those like fancy one-off ingredients that you have to buy, buy for just one meal. So skip the recipes that tell you to like buy artichokes if your family doesn't regularly eat artichokes. <laughs> skip the recipes that go, make you go out and buy one bottle of fish sauce just to make this one particular recipe that you're only gonna make one time. Stick to the things you're going to be using consistently over and over every day and that will save you money in the long run. The next tip is to buy foods that your family will actually eat. If you're trying to stock your pantry but you're buying foods that your family doesn't even like, that's really just a waste of money. Don't buy something just because it's a canned food that can store on your shelf for the next six months to a year or more. Buy things that your family actually likes to eat, but think about the shelf stable versions of those foods. So think about five to 10 foods that your family eats every single week and buy those shelf stable versions, like canned or dried fruit instead of the fresh versions. So like if your family eats peaches, consider stocking canned peaches. If your family likes chicken, buy canned chicken. If your family doesn't eat pasta, don't keep boxes and boxes of noodles in your pantry for emergency situations because if there's an emergency, your family won't suddenly like pasta. <laughs> Obviously, if there's an emergency situation or a job loss or a significant increase in grocery costs and you need to eat from your pantry for a while, you might need to alter your meals a little bit. Like if you're used to running to the grocery store every few days and buying fresh foods you might need to eat slightly differently. Like you might prefer fresh veggies over canned, but an emergency or even just like a super stressful event or if you're trying to save money and you're unable to go to the store, it's incredibly helpful to have them on hand. I have a free guide to a prepared pantry that will give you a list of some shelf stable food items that you might wanna have in your prepared pantry and I'll leave a link for it in the description box. My next tip is to buy foods in bulk. Now, I have five kids, so we are a large family, so buying in bulk really does make a lot of sense for us. It decreases the cost overall, so we might pay a little bit more upfront, but 
we decrease our cost over time. So if these items are stored and sealed well, you can keep them for months and months sometimes if you don't have five kids who eat all of your food really, really quickly. <laughs> now you might not need 50 pounds of oats like I do. You could split the bag with a friend and then you'll both get a little bit of a discount because the cost per pound or per ounce goes down significantly when you buy a larger quantity of something. In our current situation with the way grocery costs are going, I would recommend that if you have anything that you can buy in bulk right now, especially grains like oats, rice, wheat, flour, wheat berries, any of those things, and you can afford to budget for it or extend your budget a little bit to buy those in bulk right now, I would recommend doing it because the price is likely going to increase pretty significantly in the next few months, or they just might not even be as accessible. So I have a post that I will link. I have a post on my blog that tells you how to store bulk foods if you're not familiar, and I'll leave some links to some of my favorite storage items for storing bulk food items. There are several places that you can buy bulk foods. Now you probably are aware of some of the places like Sam's Club or Costco. Those are really good options, especially locally. And you can even buy from them online also, but my favorite place is Azure Standard. And I'll leave a link to them in the description box too, but they're my favorite because they're a grocery food co-op and they're family owned and they're just wonderful people, <laughs> but they will ship to all over the United States and you go and you pick up once a month and they have a lot of organic and bulk food options. And if you are not going to buy an item in bulk, you don't have to, you can buy it in smaller quantities, but they have a ton of options for buying like 25 to 50 pounds of grains. So I highly recommend seeing if there is a drop off in even just your like general vicinity. Okay, let's talk for a minute about meats. Now, meats can be one of the most expensive parts of your meal, right? So stretching your proteins can be really helpful on your budget. And we are big meat eaters here. <laughs> Did you hear that? I think there's a rooster in my house. We are big meat eaters here, but we also know how to stretch our proteins. I will make like a whole chicken one day and then the next day we'll eat some for lunch and then the next day I'll use it to make like a pot pie or a stir fry. Sometimes we can even make the meat stretch a little further, but I have five boys and they get really hungry and usually it <laughs> doesn't really work very well. <laughs> But depending on how hungry the kids were the first day we ate it, we can maybe stretch it to another meal. Buying your meat in bulk. Okay, there was a rooster in my house. There was a rooster in my kitchen, but he's not there anymore. <laughs> so buying your meat in bulk and canning or preserving it can also save you a lot of money. Using alternative um, protein sources is also a great way to stretch your budget. We like to keep some shelf-stable proteins on hand like beans, canned chicken, canned salmon, quinoa, and even hemp heart seeds are a great source of protein. <laughs> There's the rooster, he's outside. <laughs> when you buy dry beans in bulk, it will actually save you a lot of money too, especially compared to canned beans. Canned beans are super convenient, but you could also buy the dry ones in bulk and can your own if you know how to do that. One of the biggest ways that you can save money on your grocery budget is to cook from scratch. Pre-made items, those convenience items that you go to the store and you buy and it's already made for you and all you have to do is pop it in the oven or you know, cook it up on the stove, they're generally a lot more expensive than if you were gonna buy the ingredients to make those things yourself. Like the cost of granola bars, that is gonna add up a lot compared to if you just were to buy the ingredients to make the granola bars and make them yourself. I have a couple of really great granola bar recipes that I'll put in the comments. Bread, like when we bake, when we bake bread, it costs a fraction of the price of buying bread. Do we still buy bread sometimes? Yeah, for sure. But if we're definitely being a little bit more budget conscious, we are going to make all of these things versus buying them and just having the convenience of having them already made for us. Plus the nutritional value of making your own versus buying the convenience stuff so much better 
where you stand on this, but there are a lot of people that believe that canned or frozen foods are not as nutritious as fresh foods, but the textures definitely can be different. And so that can sometimes affect the taste a little bit, but the nutrition is often not as compromised as you think that it is. If the foods are properly preserved, their nutritional value is actually really, really significant. So even though I love fresh foods, I mean, I have a huge garden outside that I love to grow things and eat them as fresh as possible, but I also know that our grocery budget would absolutely explode if we just only ate fresh foods year round. Plus, we would never keep anything for emergencies. We would never be able to build any sort of pantry if we only had fresh foods. So keeping canned items and frozen items is really helpful. And it also just keeps us from going to the grocery store every other day. <laughs> So I just don't have time for that. With um, a family of seven, I just do not have time to go to the grocery store every other day. So having canned and frozen food items, even if they are not your absolute favorite, even if there are, you know, if, you know, if you're not super crazy about the texture, but it's still a food that you would eat, I would recommend keeping some on hand because they're just helpful to have. Choose one, canned or frozen. Now canned, obviously they're gonna last a lot longer. If there's power outage, you don't have to worry about it, but Either one, keep them on hand so that if something happens and you need to like pull a quick meal out of your freezer or out of your pantry, you're able to do so. All right, question. How are you with food waste? This is a thing, right? Especially in the United States, we are really bad about food waste. And I'll admit I'm not the greatest about sometimes those leftovers get pushed into the back and you pull it out and it's gross and fuzzy on top. And I'm trying to get better about that. But there are a lot of things that we actually think are waste, but they're actually useful. So things like apple scraps, you can use them to make vinegar. You can use citrus peels to make at home cleaners. You can use bones and veggie scraps to make bone broth. You can save your baking grease and use it for cooking. And believe me, if you have never had eggs, especially fresh eggs cooked in bacon grease, you're missing out. But this saves money because then you're not buying other things. I don't have to spend my money on oil if I'm using bacon grease. I don't have to buy the vinegar or I don't have to buy the cleaners if I'm making my own from scraps of food that we're already eating. This just saves money and it just cuts down on waste in general. You can also feed your food scraps to your animals if you have pigs or I don't know, do dogs eat food scraps? Dogs eat some food scraps, I don't have dogs, but I do have chickens and chickens love food scraps, especially those little bits of like cereal or oatmeal that your kids might leave in the morning and they leave just enough to be like, really, you couldn't have finished that? But they don't, they don't finish it and they just leave it at the table. And so then you can scrape it out and give it to your chickens and your chickens are happy and they give you eggs and it saves a little bit on their feed costs. <laughs> but food waste can also be tossed into your compost bin and then it's turned into good soil over time. And then good compost is actually pretty expensive. So then it saves you money on buying the compost to put in your garden. Have you ever made a big batch of soup and then when you eat it, you have all these leftovers and you think, oh yes, we're gonna have soup for lunch tomorrow. And then you don't eat it for lunch tomorrow or maybe you don't eat it for dinner and you might have a leftover night, but your family's kind of sick of it after a couple days. Well, you could take that leftover soup and you could put it in the freezer or you could take your leftover um, mushrooms that you used half of the mushrooms for a recipe and you could dehydrate the rest of your mushrooms. You could buy a bunch of celery and then you could dehydrate or freeze half of the celery after you use part of it for, you know, fresh eating or cooking. There's a lot of things that you can dehydrate, freeze, or can. These are all ways to preserve foods and they could be foods from your garden. They could be foods that you just buy, like you bought it in bulk and you preserve half of it. I did that recently that I bought bulk celery because I grew some celery in my garden, but not enough to like keep a large amount, but I really wanted to have um, some celery over the winter. So I bought bulk celery, dehydrated some, and I froze some. And it was, it's just been great to be able to like pop it out of the freezer. It's already cut, throw it in a soup, throw it in any kind of dish that I'm making. Super convenient and it actually saved me money in the long run. So this can go for foods that you buy or foods that you grow yourself. Speaking of foods that you grow yourself, this is actually my number one 
recommendation for saving money and building up your pantry, especially right now as we are going into the growing season. Grow your own food. This is going to save you money. Now, if you don't have an established garden, you might need to spend a little bit to build up a little bit of infrastructure, to build a bed, but there are a lot of cheap ways that you can actually build a garden bed. You can use logs. You can see if any friends are tossing out any um, you know, pieces of lumber that you could use. You could use bricks. You could look on free Facebook groups for um, just some bricks that somebody doesn't want, landscaping papers, things like that. Um, but growing even a portion of your own food can make a significant impact on your food budget. Now, if you're a beginner gardener, please do not try to grow everything. Like pick three to five foods that your family will eat that you know that they're going to eat. And especially plants that will produce a lot of food. Something like zucchini or tomatoes or um, kale. <laughs> I love kale. Not everybody likes kale, but I really love it. If you have the time and the space, then add even more than that. But stick with foods that you know your family is going to actually eat. Now, last year, our family was able to grow all of our tomatoes and our tomato sauce, all of our greens like lettuce, kale, things like that, all of our zucchini and all of our herbs for the entire year. We also grew most of the produce that we ate during the grow growing season. So we didn't even have to go much to the grocery store at all. So even though we didn't grow all of our beans or all of our peas for the entire year, we grew enough to get us out of the grocery store pretty much the entire summer. We were able to store and preserve a lot of the things like the zucchini and the tomatoes. We, and all of our herbs pretty much, um, some things like celery and even some berries that we have like tons of raspberries in our yard and we were able to like take a lot of these things and preserve them to have over the course of the whole year and even the things that we weren't you know like we didn't have like all of our berries for the whole year but we were able to make a little bit of a dent into our budget and the same with the potatoes we didn't grow all of our potatoes for the year but we were able to make a dent in our budget so we also continue to grow greens throughout the cold months because we have a little like hoop house greenhouse. And so we grew a lot of greens into December. It was really January that it got too cold here in Wisconsin that we couldn't really grow um, any more greens in there. But we also grew sprouts in all of winter, pretty much all through winter, we've been growing sprouts in our house. And I have a really detailed tutorial for how to grow sprouts. I have that in my Cultivate Your Home membership, and I'll leave a link to that if you're interested in learning more about it. This is our third season in our current house. So we have a better idea now of what we can and we can't grow. And we've like put a lot of our time and effort into growing the infrastructure and like building our raised beds and things like that. So I didn't grow to our maximum capacity in the past couple of years, but this year we really plan to up our food production a lot, just with everything that's going on and wanting to be able to can and dehydrate and freeze more things that are coming out of our own garden. But we also have um, chickens. We raise chickens, which you heard the rooster earlier. <laughs> and now while raising chickens for eggs doesn't necessarily help your budget, I will say the cost of feed tends to offset the free eggs, but it definitely helps you to shorten your food supply and just helps you have a more reliable food source. And then we took a lot of our eggs that we had from the summer months and we preserved them in pickling lime we didn't pickle the eggs but we did what some people call water glassing eggs and we preserve them to keep over the year so that in the winter months we didn't have to go out and buy any eggs we could just be using our preserved eggs from the summer months and it worked out really great for us and it really carried us through a lot of the winter um, i was a little bit stingy because it was our first year and i probably was too stingy because there were a few times that I actually went out and bought fresh eggs because I didn't want to dip in and be without eggs. Like I didn't want to dip into our supply of preserved eggs and be totally without eggs. But I wish I had just, just been using them instead of going out and buying some of the eggs. Like I bought some from a local farm a couple of times and I probably could have done without that. 
Um, but now our, our, our chickens are producing eggs again. We got seven eggs yesterday. So they're back up and producing after the winter, you know, the winter slowdown. So I'm really excited that we can now preserve more and I won't be quite as stingy this year. <laughs> My next tip would just be to not be loyal to a brand. So you might be used to buying name brand Cheerios. Well, if you switch to the off brand, the store brand, the generic brand, it's going to save you a lot of money. Now, because name brands just usually cost a lot more <laughs> and generic and store brand items just don't. So try switching to an off brand and you might find that it actually saves you quite a bit of money. The other thing that kind of goes along that line is shopping maybe some unconventional stores or maybe a store that you don't typically shop at. So you might be used to shopping at the store that actually is maybe it's like the closest store option but it's the more expensive store option. So like where we live the close one of the closest grocery stores is owned by the Kroger brand and it's actually like way more expensive than if we shop at like Aldi or even if we shop in bulk food stores like Costco. Um, so shopping at a different store, think like if you're used to shopping at Whole Foods and then you switch to Aldi, you're going to be saving a significant amount of money. Now these might not have the same brands and they might not have exactly the foods that you're looking for, but if you're trying to stick to a budget and build a pantry, I highly recommend switching some of your regular stores and trying something different. That also means that you might actually have to try something a little bit more unconventional, like a dollar store. The Dollar Tree has a lot of great options and I've gotten a lot of canned foods and pastas and things like that there or like a farm store or a hardware store. If you're local to the Midwest you might be familiar with like Fleet Farm or Farm and Fleet and those stores they actually carry a lot of like snack foods and dry goods and things like that that you would maybe not find at the same prices at you know your local grocery store. The one thing I recommend if you are going to be buying from those unconventional stores is just to look a little bit more closely at the ingredients because they do tend to be a little bit like cheaper products. So they might have filler ingredients, things that you're not um, typically buying things with like high fructose corn syrup or certain additives and things that maybe you are not okay with. I'm not okay with buying a lot of foods that have those type of ingredients in there. So just make sure that you double check those types of ingredients if you're going to be shopping at those little, like unconventional stores. My next tip is to keep foods that will last. There are a lot of foods that can be kept on your shelf for a really long time or they can even keep in your fridge or your freezer for a long time or just in a cool space in your house. So there is some produce like potatoes or squash that can be kept for months in a cool area of your house. In the winter, I actually like to use my mudroom is unheated and it's attached to our kitchen, but it goes out to our garage and we don't really come into our house that way. So we don't really use it like a mudroom. We kind of use it a little bit more like a storage room. But we can put a lot of like our produce out there and use it like a root cellar. It serves the same purpose for us in the winter time. Now in the summer, we are eating a lot more fresh food, so it's not quite as necessary to have that amount of root cellar type storage. But you can also store or preserve the foods that you grow in your garden and keep them on your shelf for a really long time. You can grab them from a farm stand or a local you know, a local farm, you can buy them in bulk and then you can keep them on your shelves for a longer period of time. You should definitely keep flour on hand, obviously, right, for baking. Anything that you want to be baking, you want to have some kind of flour on hand, whether you're baking bread or biscuits or whatever. But grains in their raw form, they're not ground yet, so they're in their like whole form, they will last forever. <laughs> Getting a little uh, sandlot here forever. Anyway, grains will last a really long time. Those like oat groats, wheat berries. So if you have a grain mill, you can have a really inexpensive hand crank grain mill. You can have a more expensive electric one, which is a little bit better for like everyday use, but a hand crank grain mill will be better in like the case of an emergency or your power goes out, there's a storm, things like that. But you can buy your grains in bulk 
and then you can grind them at home. And this just gives you such good food security because you can even buy a small amount of wheat berries or oat groats or buckwheat groats, any of those kind of things, any of those grains in their whole form. And you can keep them for such a long time. Put them in a you know food grade bucket with a really great lid and I'll like I said before, I'll give you some good links to those in the description, but they will store for a super long time. And it's just such great food security to have those on hand, especially not knowing what's happening with wheat supplies, things like that right now. Things like canned foods, dried foods, dehydrated veggies, pasta, those kind of things can all last for a really, really long time, sometimes years before you need to eat them. So if you buy any of these things, like buy them on sale, buy them in bulk, then you can save them for when you need them. Speaking of sale, buying things on sale is smart. I'm not a big like couponer because I tend to find that the things that I want to buy, I can't find coupons for, but you can use like coupon apps. You can just watch for things to go on sale. There are a lot of stores that will have like BOGO deals, you know, buy one, get one half off or buy one, get one free, those type of things. So if it's something that you would normally eat, just grab it, grab the extra while it's on sale. Um, you can also find a lot of stores either in their bakery section, especially, or their produce section will sell like, they'll have like a clearance bin and you can find things in the clearance bin for just really, really low prices, like produce that is kind of like nearing its expiration and they just want to get rid of it or, you know, day or two day old bakery items. You can buy like day old bread and freeze it in your freezer. When we were first married, we used to go to the Jimmy John's around the corner from us. Like it was literally around the corner from us and we would buy their day old bread and we would eat that instead of going to the grocery store and buying bread. I don't know if they do that anymore. I actually don't eat that kind of bread anymore. I can't eat gluten. I've also actually used the app Rakuten. Rakuten? Rakuten. Rakuten. I think that's how you say it. Rakuten. And it gives you cash back for buying places you would already go to. I buy through Vitacost and I buy it through the Rakuten app and it gives me a little bit of cash back. And they're like, I bought something around Black Friday and they were giving like a huge cash back deal. So that was really awesome. You can also buy, buy places like Walmart and Sam's Club and Target through the Rakuten app. And you know, it adds up over time, like $5 here and there is $5 you can spend on something else. Another way that we really like to save money on our budget is to buy directly from local farmers. So we buy all of our meat, almost all of our meat from local farmers. We will buy our beef and our pork in bulk. So we will buy like a whole cow and we will buy a half a pig, something like that. And we'll, you know, get it, you get it from the butcher and you get it all cut up into the cuts that you want and you put it in your freezer. And so we have meat to last us for a super long time except that I have five boys and they eat a lot of food. <laughs> so it doesn't last as long as you think that it would. But we also do things like we will visit our local apple orchard. And last year we bought at the end of the season, we bought five or six huge boxes of apples for like half the cost of what they would have cost in the grocery store. And they were fresher. We made up all of our applesauce out of that. And we, you know, put some apples, we kept some of it in our cool room. We kept some of it in our fridge and we were able to store them for a really long time and really kind of extend that fresh apple season. And it really saved us a lot of money on buying things like applesauce and just apples. <laughs> now there are some foods that are gonna be more expensive when you buy them from you know your local farmer, like organic free range chicken definitely costs more, but the nutritional benefits definitely outweigh buying regular chicken. But if you are on a budget, those are some things to keep in mind. And my last tip for you is to learn to forage. Public lands are often really great places to find things like raspberries, ramps, uh, blackberries, mushrooms, things like that. Now make sure that you do your research to find out what's available, where you can find it, what is safe to eat, and what your local laws are. Do not call me if you get arrested for trespassing on somebody's land that you're not supposed to be on, please. Okay, do your research, find out where you can actually go and forage things, but, and make sure you're harvesting sustainably. Okay. Especially things like ramps, wild leeks, 
some people call them. Um, there are ways that you should be harvesting those sustainably, but this is an awesome way. Like there are a lot of public lands around us that I know you can find like wild raspberries and wild elderberries. So if you don't have those on your own property, you can just go find them for free. Now this isn't exactly foraging, but you might have like a friend or a neighbor who has an apple tree and they don't pick the apples or they don't have time to pick the apples. Ask them if you can pick them for them. Or maybe you can say, hey, I'm gonna pick all these apples and can I take half of them and give you the other half? It's worth a shot, right? They might say yes. <laughs> Tap your trees, your own maple trees and make maple syrup. Plant perennial herbs all over your property wherever you can because those you just buy one time and then herbs tend to multiply and you have them forever. We have tons of chives that grow in our property that were here when we moved in. We have a lot of asparagus that was here when we moved in and a huge section of wild raspberries. And every year we've been here, we've planted a little bit more. Well, there's rhubarb too. Yeah. So every year add a little bit more and it will save you in the long run and you'll only have to pay for that thing one time. So stocking six months worth of food might not be a possibility for you right now. That is legitimate. Most people are not going to be able to go out and buy six months worth of food. If you haven't been building a prepared pantry already, you might be feeling like, oh, all these, all these, you know, grocery prices are going up. The gas is going up. Everything is going up. Food supply seems like it's a little bit unstable. But if you can add 10 to $20 worth of shelf stable items right now, like rice, pasta, oats, flour, some canned goods, that will last you a little while. Put it on your shelf and don't touch it yet, okay? Buy things that are shelf stable that you can have in a month or two months or whenever you need them, okay? Maybe you don't actually need them right now but you can have them on your shelf. So if this month you can add $20 worth of food to your pantry, then next month add $20 if it's available. Add something next week if it's available and you have a little extra. Skip your coffee out and add a couple bags of rice. Whatever you can do to put food on your pantry, it will really be helpful in the months to come. Grow some sprouts on your counter. Grab a few seed packets. Grab a few seed packets and grow some vegetables. Even if all you grow is lettuce, have you seen how much it costs to buy a box of lettuce? Oh my word. Growing your own food is never a bad idea, especially right now. But swapping even one convenience item for one homemade item, that's gonna save your budget a little bit. Whatever you can do to stock your pantry right now is going to be helpful for you in the future, in the probably near future. The things that we are buying right now are just probably realistically gonna cost more a few months from now. And the gas to get to the store is gonna cost a little bit more. So anything that you can do right now to kind of like pad your budget for the future is going to be helpful for you. And just getting the food on your shelves in the midst of all this uncertainty will just help you to feel a little bit more secure of knowing what's what's what you can do right now to feed your family. If you found these tips helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, maybe hit that little bell so that you get notified when more videos come because there are more videos coming about all things homestead, homeschool, and handmade. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!